This exercise is an opportunity for you to explore your own temper. And we call it how do you become because we used to call it how do you become angry. And then we would ask some people, they don't become angry, some people become livid, some become stressed, some are cross, some are detached. So put in whatever word suits the state that you get into. Take a sheet of paper, some pens, and either sit or stand somewhere where you're comfortable and consider the following questions. Remember to use your word for the negative state wherever I leave a blank. How do you become... Thinking about you when you're really... You're like what? When you're at your worst, you're like what? Whereabouts is your sense of? Is it inside or outside of you? Does it have a size or a shape? When you're really, you're like what? Take a moment to draw or describe you when you're at your worst. Then consider, what's the first thing that lets you know it's starting? And when it starts, where is it? What do you see or hear that lets you know it's happening? And then what happens? And then what happens? And what happens just before you're at your worst? And what happens after? And then what happens? And how do you become normal again? And take a moment to map out any new information on your paper. And what are three things that you could do to keep yourself from getting really... And write down those three things on your sheet of paper. Now that you've begun modelling you when you really... Take some time over the next couple of weeks and notice what triggers you to start feeling. And how do you keep yourself so that you're still working at your best? Applications for the How Do You Become exercise have been broad. It started with dis when I was working with disruptive teenagers, but then we actually found it was really useful for working with people who work with disruptive teenagers because it was important for them to know how they became whatever they become in order for them to manage their state a lot better. We went from that to somebody saying, can you do this with, we've got advisors that work with long-term unemployed and some of the people who come in are really cross and don't want to be there. And some of our advisors then have difficulty managing their temper. So we've used it with advisors who work with long-term unemployed. Then from there we've gone, oh, okay, that was really useful. But actually now that we've done that, some of their managers wanted some help with their tempers. And it's, 
as the as the exercise got known, we've had all sorts of, of uh, specific discrete projects. So we've had a group of solicitors contacted us and said, we'd like some anger management. When it's very stressful in the office, the solicitors tend to be very aggressive and unpleasant with the administrative staff. And it's almost ending up in legal suits, which was quite ironic. And so we came in and we worked with a whole um, soliciting team. I said, okay, so when you're getting really stressed, they, they said, we don't get angry, we get stressed. So, so when you, how do you become stressed? And they went through the form that you've got in your manuals. And then we came in and we did some modeling with, with them. And we asked them the question, so what would you need from your colleagues in order to keep your stress levels down? And what can you do in order to manage your stress? And they found that was very, very effective that they both went through the individual modeling, but they did that in front of one another. And it legitimized the feelings, allowed them to express it and notice it in one another, and then to really to support each other, to keep calm. So that was a very successful, smaller project. And then, you know, like everything else, it can be used in business teams, it can be used in classrooms. It's very effective with, with students. Um, and it can be great with families, with in relationships, in partnerships with children in your family. So it's another of those exercises that it's maybe a little bit more sensitive in terms of you might get information that people, that's quite sensitive. So we would we'd ask you to get a little bit more acquainted with the clean questions before you go off and use it. But once you're familiar with them, you can use it all over the place.